Hey everyone, welcome to Comics with Bueller. As always, I'm Bueller. Today is episode 121 of the brand new Coffee and Comic Show. And as you can see, I am not alone. I got my good friend Bob here with me. Bob? Yeah. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. Episode 121? Yeah. This is a special episode. Very special. Can't wait to get into it. Yeah. Freaking awesome. He's in a very good mood today, and we're going to tell you why here in a minute. But let me just tell you guys about uh, the topic that we're going to be talking about today, because it's an interesting topic, and I just want to get that out of the way. We're going to be talking about, uh, does an appearance of a character in a movie or TV show uh, really affect the price of a comic book, like the first appearance in the book? Or have we been conditioned to kind of just accept that the way it is right now? And like I said, when I asked this question, there's really no wrong or right answer. Yeah. This is all opinion based and we can't prove either side or another side, to be totally honest, mm -hmm. but we can definitely talk about it and that's what we're going to do today. So For it should sure. be a good conversation. That being said, we do start with the coffee that we're drinking today. And although our coffee is not brought to us by Mocha Express, Mocha Express is the official coffee shop for comics with Bueller and a little bit of everything comics Bob here. So there we go. But I'm drinking just regular house coffee, some black coffee from my Keurig machine. And that's all I wanted today because it's a little bit later in the day when we're filming and I've already had a few cups of coffee, to be totally honest. Yeah. So what are you drinking today? Uh, I'm drinking uh, from the house. It's um, iced tea flavored coffee. Oh, man. Uh, because, um, you know, it was 80 degrees the other day and my wife made sun tea and that's like one of my favorite things. And I've already had like 12 cups of coffee today. So Tea flavored coffee? Tea flavored coffee, man. That's weird. It's iced tea. Really good. It's iced tea. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! I felt it was cold. Ah. Look how, ha look how happy he is. You know why he's so happy? It's because his. Never mind. We've used that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get yeah, yeah. there. Anyway, let me have a sip of mine. Oh, mm. it tastes great with this cough drop. <laughs> you guys should see his coffee set up. It's amazing. Yeah. Speaking of coffee, we actually got some coffee being sent to us from a. Uh, uh, coffee maker or whatnot, and hopefully next week we're going to be reviewing that coffee. And uh, I don't mind getting the coffee sent to us or whatnot. So yeah, before it's coming all the way from Florida. So and then it's probably it comes from another place from besides Florida. But probably <laughs> that's where their headquarters is. So mm -hmm. very much looking so, uh, forward to that. We'll tell you about that next week. Um, hey, I just want to say I got my first COVID shot, and you know what? It feels pretty good. Uh, I know you're fully dosed up. Fully dosed up. And uh, for anyone who's hesitating about getting their COVID shot, go do it. Because I tell you, after I got it, I felt a little liberated. And I felt a lot more comfortable going to see my dad and my stepmom. I've only seen them once mm. in like the last year. They're, they are fully vaccinated now. And they were totally comfortable with everything. So it was just great just seeing them. Yeah, yeah. And just the just getting that shot, just... Give, gave me that peace of mind, you know, that I can go visit them and they're going to be fine because they're, they're all have their shots. So anyway, just putting that out there, just a little fun thing to say. So. Yeah, for sure, man. Just, just watch out for that second dose. Yeah, he was like, wow, that, <laughs> but I'm like a rock. If you give me four doses, I'll be, be rocking. Probably. <laughs> all right. Um, before we get on to our special announcement today, which we're really excited to talk about, let me just say uh, uh, welcome to our newest Patreons. We have a, a few here. We have August, we have Mike B, and Daniel Kim, all brand new Patreons from this week. So thank you so much. If you want to join our Patreon, it's the price of one comic book a month, $3.99 or $4, or something like that. You can join and you can help support Bob's need for tea coffee, whatever it's called. <laughs> tea coffee. Let's Co just leave it to Chalupas. Coffee tea or Chalupas, <laughs> you know. So if you want to join our Patreon, if you think we're worth the price of one comic book a month, Please feel free to join. It does help us out quite a bit. Pays the bills, keeps the lights on, and the camera rolling. So that's awesome, right? That's awesome. Uh, we also had some Super Chalupa chats from last week. Let me Woo! go over those. Uh, we have Mike Knight. Thank you. Uh, Chili's Pull List. The Rogue Trader again. Uh, Thomas Jackman yet yeah, again. Yes, Thomas. Uh, and Nathan Martinez. So all you wonderful people with the Super Chats from last week. Thank you. Thank you. That goes a long way. I think I did eat a Chalupa. Last week, if I'm not did mistaken. you? I don't think a week goes by when I don't. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest, that's awesome. I, mean, I don't care, even if it's not a five dollar box, I'll still get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a chalupa. Because it's a chalupa. There you go. So thank you for helping me get fat and unhealthy. I guess right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and get to what we've been wanting to talk about now for the last couple of weeks, and we haven't. And uh, this is a 
pretty awesome thing for us to be able to announce to you guys. Um, as you guys know, um, I have done a few exclusives in the past. The most recently was Blowtorch number one, mm -hmm. and you guys love that. I sold out of those. Uh, before that was uh, Knock 'em Dead uh, number one. Sold out of those as well. Well, there's been one person I've always been wanting to work with, and I just have not got the opportunity to work with. So, that being said, we have an exclusive heading your way, and the person I get to work with is none other than Bob from Everything Comics. <laughs> and we have a brand new exclusive, and it's Chess Number 1, which is the team that the Blowtorch character is associated with. Right. And it's from Second Sight Publishing. From the same writer who did the uh, Blowtorch number one. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Bob's excited because, what is this? This is your very first? Very first exclusive. Yes, very first exclusive. And here's the kicker. If you want to pre-order it, you're out of luck. You know why? Because we have them right now. We got them all. They're done. We, we've <laughs> had them done. They're all done right now. Look at that. Look at these. They're Very all awesome. available right now. We, we kept this a secret. We got them made ahead of time. Bob, you want to talk a little bit about them? Um, and this is awesome. Uh, I, I have not had a chance to read the book yet. I know that you have. Yes. Um, but uh, he uh, uh, Bueller sent me some pictures of the covers, and uh, this is the one that I, I thought would be the best. 90s team action here. Yep. Very cool. On the back, you got both. Oh. The Comics of Bueller logo. I'll and put then, this right up there. And then so my we'll logo as well. There. And, uh, man, I, I am so excited about this. I had never thought in a million years this would ever happen. This is comic book, like, to yes. the heart goodness. Yes. And uh, I am so excited to be a, a, a part of getting this out, working with you. And the very first exclusive between Comics with Bueller yep. and Everything Comics. That's awesome, man. That is awesome. Congratulations, Bob. Thank you, man. I'm very happy. I, you guys probably know us a few weeks back, Bob changed his logo. I did. I and had to. one of the reasons was, is like, we can't be sticking Superman and Hulk <laughs> on the back of other publishers' comics. This is true. So it's a conversation we kind of talked about a little bit, and Bob uh, went ahead and changed his logo. I like it. I, yeah. I really yeah. enjoy it. My wife designed that, and yep. I think it's... One of the best changes I've made to my channel. There you go. And now it's <laughs> on the back of your very first exclusive comic. So awesome. And like I said, they're available right now. Literally right, right now. now. We've already got them all bagged and boarded and ready to go. We did, we're did. we going to do a pre-sale. Uh, our, our hat's off to Second Sight Publishing for kind of hooking us up. They made us a great deal. We couldn't pass up on it, to be totally honest. Yeah. And uh, so we jumped on it for you guys because I know there was a lot of uh, people asking about this book, this chest number one, which kind of goes along with. Blowtorch number one. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you how you get the book right now. How can you get the book? Um, so what we have, we have two copies of the book. Right. We have the Virgin one, which you want to show right there. Sure. And, because Bob likes the Virgin ones, and we have the regular trade dress one. Mm -hmm. So you get the set. You get the set of the uh, Virgin one. You get the set with the trade dress one. And the price is $24 for the set. So two books for $24 plus $6 shipping. In the U.S., we will ship to Canada if you're outside, but it's a little bit more, and I'll tell you that if you're from Canada, just let me know. If you want to get two sets, because we're limiting people to two sets, you can do that, and the shipping goes up just $2 to $8 total. Right. So if you want to get two sets, just let us know. So how do you let us know? We actually have a brand new email address, and then i got to make sure I get this right. <laughs> it's bobandbuellercomic at gmail.com. Just send us an email, and we will send you an invoice. For the book, and that's all there is to it. There you go. Very easy and simple. If you guys bought the blowtorch, you know exactly how it works. Just send me an email. You let me know what you're interested in. If you want one set or two sets, also let us know if you want us to autograph the books as well. Right. Um, a lot of people will, will ask the autograph. It's easier if you tell me right away the first off. So I'll make a note on the invoice so I know to autograph it. And I don't know about Bob, but uh, I'm. Uh, I would much rather autograph the back of the book mm -hmm. uh, because that's by our logo. Um, I, I respect the artist a lot, and they're the ones who did the work on the front. Sure. Uh, if you want us to sign the front, I will, but if you ask us to sign, I'm automatically going to sign on the back by my logo. I think Bob probably feels the same way. Absolutely. Um, but we will make an exception if you ask. But sure. I'm just saying, by default, it's probably going to go on the back of the book. So, And the other part of this is that uh, we only have limited quantities. Yes. Right? Very limited quantities. Yeah. So less than 80 sets. So for Bob's very first exclusive, there's not going to be very many. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of went low on this one, but it's going to work out okay. So right now, 
as of this morning, there's less than 80 sets available. Mm -hmm. And once they're gone, they are That's gone. It. That's it. We, there's, like I said, we've already got them all. We know how many we got in. We've already looked at all the ones. We pull out if there's any uh, damages or whatnot, which there was none. There's like one, one with a spine tech. And I was like, That's mine. <laughs> and that was about it. Mm -hmm. So we already know what we have. We know our inventory. We'll keep a couple of extra just in case something gets lost in the mail. Sure. You know, just to play it safe. But for the most part, there is only less than 80 sets available right now. If you're interested, send us an email. Like I said, Bob and Bueller comic at gmail.com. Brand new email address. We'll get you taken care of. We'll actually get you the books probably by the end of the week. Right, exactly. To be honest, oh, I mean, if man. you're here within the U.S., you probably get them by Friday or Saturday because they'll. It, the more we get on today, which I think we probably sell out today, to be honest. Right. Um, we'll ship them out tomorrow or Wednesday in a couple of days. You should get them Friday or Saturday. Have so. them by the end of the week. There you go. That's awesome. Just look at the back of that book, y'all. He's, he's, he's very happy. <laughs> he, when he saw, he just saw it just a few minutes ago with his logo <laughs> on there. And I got them last night and stuff. But uh, I was very happy with the turnout of the book. I think the cover looks pretty good. We'll put a digital image up here so you can see it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But very happy. So you get the trade dress one and you get the virgin one for the price of $24 plus $6 shipping. Uh, limit two sets. So anyway, Bob, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of that and working with you. Uh, I, I'm beyond over the moon excited about yeah. this. And uh, I mean, I I can't wait to show my son. Yeah. You know, it's just, <laughs> you got to see this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited as well. I mean, I've already had a couple, so but to see your reaction to the newness of being your first one, I know exactly how you're feeling right now. So That's I think awesome. It's, I think it's pretty cool. So <laughs> thank you, man. Anyway, dude, there you go. Chest number one, very first comics with Bueller. Everything comics teamed up together exclusive there can be only one first right there can only be one first that's there right that's right. <laughs> all right very cool all right let's move on and get the show going and uh we're gonna go ahead and start off with the uh first five brought to you by none other than comic pro line mm -hmm. bob you want to go first sure uh so i went with the theme this week of um comics that have been gifted to me or given to me and um so I'll just start with this one. This was given to me by a really good friend of mine. He's sitting right next to me. That's right. Uh, Bueller gave me this awesome Bruce Lee comic. Nice. As soon as I saw it, I flipped out over it. And then a good friend of ours, Eric, Yeah. Uh, he brought, uh, we met him this week at Mocha Express, and here is a variant cover for Giga, number one. <coughs> and then a good friend of the show uh, sent, sent me a couple of Daredevil comics. Which I absolutely it just sung to my heart. Yep. And there, there's an annual, and then this is number uh, 276. You can never go wrong with Daredevil. There you go. And then my good buddy from uh, Heroes to Icons, Jason, he sent me um, three of the Storm Riders uh, trade paperbacks. Nice. And so here's one of them. And uh, I just love the artwork by Wing Shing Ma. And so there's my first five. Wing Shing Ma? Wing Shing Ma. Nice. Very cool stuff. Very nice, man. Let's see your first five. All right, I got them right here. So, very excited to show this first one because this one is a Shannon Mare cover. Woo! And this is the Vampirella 19. And this is exactly how I sit. <laughs> uh, I sit uh, legs wide open. Actually, it's actually uh, my uh, clothing I wear, my nighttime wear as well. But there you go. <laughs> That's his Chalupa pose. <laughs> uh, we're going to give the Punisher some love. Uh, here's Punisher number one. Kind of cool. It's a limited edition. Nice. I don't know what it's from. Um, and these ones actually Sam gave to me. Oh, cool. Uh, this is the Punisher year one number one. Thought that was kind of cool. You yeah. Know, I'm a Punisher fan. And here is number two. Not too bad. And we're going to finish with this one. I don't even know what book this is, but it's from the Battle Lines variants. I think it's probably Avengers or something. Nice. But it's a great Punisher variant. Yeah. So I wanted to show that off. And give some Punisher love because he's making a comeback and he's in books right now. And people said that wasn't going to happen. They, they did. They didn't know what they were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> like I told them, but you know, nobody listens to me, right? <laughs> Somebody listen. There you go. <laughs> anyway, that's your first five brought to you by Comic Pro Line and some really nice books. I like that Wing Shu Ma one that you showed. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty it's cool. Amazing artwork inside I'm of those. I'm just going to take it. You, you want it? No, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and jump over to our topic, and our topic is brought to you by Black Box Comics. You can go to their website, blackboxcomics.net, under the code Bueller10, and guess what? You save 10% off any of their books or anything they have on their website. 
They got the brand new uh, Devil's Dominion number four coming out, I think. And they got a brand new book as well that I'll be highlighting here pretty soon. I can't remember the name of it. I felt kind of bad about that. But I might just put a picture on screen so you can see it so that way I cover my bases and probably put a little title down there as well. Mm-hmm. Anyway, new book. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. Black Box Comics. Anyway, topic. Check, check out Shino Kage from them. It's really good. Yeah, you like that stuff, I huh? do. It, it loves it. <laughs> it loves it. It's a samurai book, man. All right, let's go into the topic. And like I said, the topic is, uh, does an appearance in a TV show or movie automatically increase the value of a book, like a first appearance in a book, or have we been conditioned to believe so? And when I ask this question, I really want to ask people to think about what I'm asking. Think about when this took place. What, what time in the market did someone decide or we decide that, hey, a TV show or a movie appearance equals money for a book. It wasn't like that always, but somewhere down the line, that was decided. I don't know when that was, to be totally honest, and I don't think Bob does either. We were just talking about it. We can't really pinpoint it. Maybe you guys can. And like I said, there's no really right or wrong answer to this. It's just a conversation we want to have. Yeah. But, but I will say this. I am a little bit jaded on this because I tend to lean to the uh, – condition part of it to be totally honest and uh, I've stated this in the past this is not nothing new Um, but I'm willing to hear both sides I mean I'm not discounting either side but I'm definitely leaning towards the uh, condition side of it so right right. especially in this day and age maybe it would have been different a few years ago but right now it just seems like the what it is sure all right Bob you were up first my friend all right so the first one comes from King Collector He says, uh, I think the collectors are brainwashed by the sellers on social media to watch out for this book or that book because this person has a one minute cameo. So the value will go up and up. Uh, You better buy it now. Like uh, lemmings, we buy them. (laughs) Why is everything about value? Where did the enjoyment go from just following a character evolve and reading about them? Okay. So this is one extreme of the the coin. Mm Mm-hmm. As far as the argument, like you said, he thinks collectors have been brain or conditioned. It's a brainwashed conditioning, kind of the same meaning uh, for this, what we're talking about. Uh, but this is one extreme. So I wanted to start off with the one extreme and kind of go from there. Um, I do think it a little bit holds away. I do think we do get caught up in the social, social aspect of it and people got to get it now in the FOMO. We've talked about that and stuff. Um, and I personally, I don't, I've said this as well. I'm not big on value of books. I would be okay if there was no monetary value of comics. And I would be totally okay with that. Actually, I wish that was the case. That's not what a lot of people want to hear. But I just enjoy having the book and stuff like that. As far as what they're worth, that doesn't really mean that much to me. I don't look at that. Um, A lot of people are like that. You know, I'm not saying that they're not. But this is one extreme uh, case. And then I want you to go ahead and read the next one because it's on the other side of it. Sure. Uh, So this one comes from uh, Word Bubble Collectibles. And he says, uh, no doubt it moves the market, but I'm thinking it's the newer collectors or the new money that's buying into that theory. But again, no denying it's happening. Yeah. So I'm not going to argue that point either. I mean, I, I, I agree with that as well. I, think it, I, I actually it, don't. Okay, go ahead. Right. And the reason why I don't is because I think that a lot of high priced comics mm-hmm. are priced for people who have a lot of money. Sure. Right. And so, and, and it's not about a, a reader of comics. You have a lot of people that are in, you know, the music industry Mm -hmm. and are actors and, you know, they have a lot of disposable income. Sure. And it becomes a thing to have, you know, to be able to show off in this part of their house that they have this piece of memorabilia, the first appearance of Blade or the first to be right. Right. And uh, so you have a lot of. Uh, you know, people that, um, you know. And that goes with everything, though. Artwork, cars. You know, if you got the money, you're going to exactly have that. You know, oh, right. look at my toilet seat. It's yeah, yeah. gold. <laughs> but I, I do think that there are a lot of those type of buyers inside sure. of this. And and so that, that's the only reason why I don't agree with that. Yeah. Um, so let me uh, kind of hit on this. So they said that the, well, I'm thinking the, the newer collectors uh, or the new money is what's buying stuff up right now. Okay. So I did a little bit of research and I like doing this part of it. And I, yeah. I've always wondered, okay, what is the, the tie-in ratio between a movie that comes out and how many people it brings to the comic shop to buy a comic. And really, there's no there's no mathematical thing that will predict this or whatnot. But we can do our best and like, okay, what's the scenario? 
So I did a little bit of research, and let me just tell you guys the numbers I pulled up. So a perfect example of a standalone movie that came out was Black Panther, which came out in February of 2018. Had never uh, been done before as far as, you know, a movie by itself. He made an appearance in the uh, uh, Civil War or something like that. Right, but right. this was his first movie, okay? So I was like, okay, so how did this movie do? We all know it did really well. It, did, it was like the number one movie that year. Yeah. Um, a $2 billion, something like that. Yeah. In the U.S., uh, it sold 70 million tickets. Uh, I'm looking at ticket sale because that's individual people to go see it. Obviously, some people went and saw it more than once, but I, you know, that's a whole other math equation that I sure. don't know. So, anyway, in the U.S. alone, 70 million people bought tickets to buy it. Worldwide, 134 million people, okay, bought tickets to go see Black Panther, okay? Just to give you an example, and this is in February, uh, in January, for comic sales, which Black Panther had a title on, uh, 21,000 total copies sold in January, okay? That's the normal sell rate of what they were doing before the movie came out. So, 21,000, okay? 70 million people saw that movie that next month, and that raised that total to 28,000. So 7,000 people more bought that title out of 70 million who saw that movie. Now, are those brand new people? I don't know. Like I said, this is not a perfect math equation because some of that is people that were just buying multiple copies because, hey, you know, I'm already a collector, but now there's a movie I'm buying more. So how many of that is new people? I really don't know. I'm just trying to, to lay a ground foundation. Um, now, 7,000 out of 70 million is 0.0001%. Crazy. Okay? That's all the effect that had. If that's, a, if that's a true number, that's all the effect that movie had on the sales of the comic book. 0.0001%. Okay? So, when you look at that, and then the next month that book went back down to 24,000. So Are you serious? Yes. So only wow. for one month it went up seven and it went back down to all, pretty much what it was before. Um, so and then I did the same thing on Doctor Strange, pretty much all, the same thing. Numbers were pretty much identical to what that was. Very little percentage do we actually see people going from watching the movie and translating in that in their brain saying, "I need to buy a comic book." It's very small. It does happen. Seven thousand people jumped on that thing, right? But it's very small. And so when I look at a number like that, and when you, and how much weight we are putting on these movies, and but yet it's only affecting the sale of a book, an actual increase in people wanting them walking in the door by point zero 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 one percent, we are putting way more weight on this Hollywood effect than really is in demand. Right. So what does that mean? Where is this demand coming from? The demand is coming from within the hobby itself. It's coming from the people already in there collecting, buying multiple copies to sell more copies. That's eye opening. We are driving it ourselves. Yeah. It's everyone says supply and demand, but the demand is not coming from out there's not a huge way from outside coming in increasing that demand. It's just it's just not. Right. And I wish the number was different. I sure. wish this was totally different. I, I wish I could tell you that out of hundred and thirty four million Tickets sold, a million people bought that book. I'd, I'd be happy with 100,000. Yeah, but no, I can only tell you 7,000 did. That's crazy. That's and, so eye-opening. Yeah, and like I said, this isn't perfect math. Right. And there's holes in this left to right, but there's holes in it from each side. This is the best I can do. And if you have a different equation that you can think of, share it with me and I'll run the numbers or whatnot. Or do it yourself. And, you know, just kind of, okay, what is the real effect? Uh, but this is the best I can come up with. So, I mean, saying that, and then looking at how much weight we put on the movies and the TV and all that stuff, and then knowing those numbers, and there isn't actually the increase from the outside interest, not to say that there is not, because there is a small percentage, but it's extremely small. Right. Point zero 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 one one thousandth of one percent. Right. That, that's just incredible. How about one percent? <laughs> please yeah. no i mean if, if you look at it i mean you know objectively you know just based upon that you can say okay so you know the movies are not bringing in new comic book readers yeah right uh we do know that on the licensing side uh they sell all kinds of stuff yes you know i mean they sell tons of stuff exactly like you know i was talking to you before the show those cut co those uh, coloring books yeah. that i do they started releasing a coloring book for every new movie that came out because it equated to people looking yeah. and buying buying stuff 
So we know that the licensing, definitely they make more money off of that. But now we realize that there's not that much that they're actually is bringing in new readers. Yeah. Right? How much is it actually really doing on the other side of things, which is the aftermarket, yeah. right? Because we see that all the time. All of a sudden, if you watch Comic Tom show, right, a movie comes out and speculation starts happening and books start spiking. Yeah. And the movie doesn't even have to come out now. No, this is true. We're, we're now to the point to where the movie doesn't have to come out. No. We just have to see a picture of a girl on the set. On an, on an art, yeah, exactly. You know, and that's all it takes. Sure. Or, you know, a, a, a random rumor. Or who was they talking to on the phone in right. that in that thing. Yeah. And now, that's where the point... That's what I'm trying to say. To where our point was, okay, they're in a the movie, they get a movie, and it's the, the movie's out, it does very well, okay? And now, our bar has been lowered to like, oh, there's a picture of someone that looks like someone. Oh, they're talking to someone on the phone. Who's that? Right. And then that's where we are right now. Which is what they were doing inside of WandaVision. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I mean... That's why I say, look at the big picture. Look at everything I'm asking about. Not just what you say. Yeah, of course it does. Of course it makes it go up. That's the easy answer. But if you look at the question a little bit more, what I'm really asking, and what it details, and at what point did we decide this, and at what point do we stop deciding that even the littlest thing right now is making a huge difference? And who is deciding that? This is true. That's a good. That's a good question. We are. We are the <laughs> secondary market. We are. There's no. A, People, I told, like I was telling Bob, I said, Marvel doesn't make any money from selling the first appearance of Doctor Strange, you right. know, or Black Panther from Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. You know, they make it from new books, and all they saw was a 7,000 copy increase at $2 a, a book, you know, for them. So, it's, what do they make? $14,000 extra? Right. For that month, for just comic books, not a huge amount of money. Nothing. You know, so I don't know. I'm just... Throwing numbers out there. No, it's I, good. I, I like l- looking this stuff up and kind of talking about it and shedding some light. I'm not trying to devalue anything. I'm just saying, hey, you know, dig a little deeper, see what you find out. It's kind of interesting to do. What else am I going to do, really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk about comics all day, so. No, but again, you know, like I said, I, I think it's very eye-opening to see the actual effect uh, on, you know, does it actually bring in new readers? Yeah. I mean, and if it does. I wish it did. There's no longevity there. I yeah. mean, if yeah. it goes Long. back to the normal numbers the, the next month, yeah. I would say the majority of those people that are buying extra comics, it's yeah. what it is. It, that's what it is. It's people buying extra comics. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a very even smaller percentage of people actually walking in and saying, hey, I want. Well, I mean, you got to think. Another thing is, like, I don't translate Black Panther to the average person watching that movie and saying, I need to go buy a comic book when they get done. I translate it to like, man, that was a great movie. When I'm at the the Target next week, maybe they got a shirt there. Because they don't have a comic book there. Right, they don't. You know? And they, you'd have to literally go to a, a comic book shop that's made for comics to get that. So it's more like, you know, I'm on my way out. So, oh, cool, man, there's a Black Panther hat. Or a, a t-shirt or an action figure. And it's on the shelf that's on the shelf of all the Walmarts or Targets all over the world. You know? And that's where the money goes to. Right, right. You know? So, anyway. That's All crazy. Right. We're going to get going to the next one. <laughs> All right, you got the next one. Yeah, this is a uh, fantastic comics and art. It says, my thoughts is it depends on the film is received and if it opens the door, so to speak, for more films or TV shows. New Mutants is a perfect example. The film languished in limbo for years, and when it came out earlier this year, no effect of uh, value on the comics whatsoever. Old Man Logan boosted Wolverine issues for a little while, but it quickly cooled down. Um, so I want to hit on the success of the show. The New Mutants is a perfect example of a show that didn't succeed. You know, right. and there's all sorts of problems with that. You know, it's I, I didn't watch it myself. I watched like ten minutes of it. But anyway, we all know the deal with that. But yeah. it, it you, depending on the success of the show, you know, it makes it makes it more valuable. I guess that's the theory. Okay. Endgame, Infinity Wars, the most successful Marvel movies that there are. Okay. How much is the first appearance of Thanos right now? It's right. it's nowhere near what it was, no. you know, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And that's the most successful ones by far. Yeah. You know, if you want to go by popularity or ticket sales. Thanos is still a very valuable character. He's done in the Marvel Universe as far as we know, you know. Uh, but that peaked a couple of years ago, you know, when that was getting all the hype and stuff. Iron Man what, 55 right. and whatnot. It's done, gone down quite a bit. Absolutely. So, I mean... How much does success really really matter? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm throwing out the the number one and number two Marvel movie of all time, mm-hmm. and that was based on that character. He's the main bad for it, 
and you know it was it's not worth as much as it used to be no and and you know that and that, that's the thing i think you know we've talked about this before you've done videos numerous times where you you talked and showed you know comics uh, that were hot at one particular point and based upon you know speculation based upon movies and TV shows or whatever was coming out and then you show those comics six months later a year yeah. later and you just ask did it hold its value yeah and nine times out of ten very few very few actually hold their values it, it was starting to get invigorate and, and that's that's the word I want to start using from now on invigorate invigorate right and so I think I think when you get a lot of these, you take that pill, you'll be invigorated. There you go. <laughs> At least for four hours, if not, call a doctor. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> there you go. But but you know that that's what ends up happening. You get this news, and I think it invigorates you know the aftermarket. Yeah. And and so all of a sudden this book becomes hot for a few minutes, uh, and then it slowly starts to go away because something else has come along and, yes. and invigorated yeah. the market. Yeah. And I think if you look at it that way, it makes more sense. Uh, is it actual true, uh, you know, value or is it really hot? I, I don't think so because I mean these videos that you guys have done have shown nine times out of ten the the book goes way back down with just in six months. Yeah, you know. I mean, what would you rather have if you're investing in the book? Obviously, it depends on when you sell it. What would you, would you rather have a steady uptick or would you have? dips and ebbs and flows or maybe a peak and then slowly down right i mean if it was me i want a steady uptick if i'm going to invest a lot of money i want to know that year after year after year my money's going to increase in value of this book you know? or hopefully yeah i mean there, there are some that i would just be happy if it just held its value yeah right but a big, a big character like that and thanos is a huge character mm -hmm. okay to where there's no reason why that book shouldn't be i mean take the take the movie out of it Okay, and just take the first appearance of Thanos, and he didn't make it a movie appearance. That book would probably just steadily increase year after year after year. Just normal cost of increase. Yeah, or whatever, absolutely. Okay? Just because of what that is. But because of the movie, it made it spike, and then now it's coming slowly back down. So, you know, that's it's kind of it's a false narrative uh, almost when you when you look at it that way. Because I would much rather have a book that just con. I'm, I have books in my collection for 20 years, okay, or you probably have as well. Mm -hmm. And they just sit there. And I'd like to know that, you know, 20 years ago it was worth this and now it's worth that, you right. know. And every year it just increased and instead of just like, oh, oh, you know, right, now I'm right. like, oh, man, you know, how low does it go? You know, it, maybe it doesn't get as low as what it, what it was, but I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, it, it's a weird thing. It really is. <coughs> because, I mean, uh, you know, you asked the question earlier, who's making the decision that this yeah. is supposed to be hot? Supply and demand. That's what people keep on telling me. <laughs> right? But and, we're the ones demanding it. So it's a, you know, that's the weird thing. It's, yeah. It's, it, I don't know. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got yeah. the next one. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next one is from Michael Mezzer. He says, I think it depends uh, where the first TV movie appearance is on. Like, if it's a sci fi channel or the CW. Probably won't add much to the value. If the first appearance is on Disney Plus, Netflix, or something like HBO, it could totally increase the value of the comic book. Okay, I call this the CW effect. Mm -hmm. Not everything is created equally, and apparently we've decided that. Right. Okay. Now, it's popularity or whatnot. These shows have been on the air for seven, eight years. Yeah. They've been on the, the air uh, long enough to be popular enough to make season after season after season after season. Yep. All this time, okay? So there is an audience there. There is a fan base there that likes this. Mm -hmm. But somewhere on the line, we said, nope, the CW shows do not affect books. Right. And a handful of others, the sci-fi shows or whatever the, they did, like Krypton or whatever or something like that. But there are a certain amount of shows that we just randomly said, doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter, but Disney Plus, it matters. Because I think that lady talked to someone on the phone. And I keep on using that reference because I think it's the dumbest thing that there is. <laughs> or the Mandalorian. There's a robot with red eyes. Right. You know, it's literally just stuff like that that we're putting all this weight behind. And, you know, how long it lasts, I don't know. But I don't, it's, it's, it's not created equally. It's not set on the board as being the same thing. Gotham is another show. I really enjoyed that show. They made five seasons. You know, it wasn't one and done. Right. You know, these are ones that have a fan base that have been there for a while. Even that Legends of Tomorrow, that's been out for like five or six seasons right yeah, now and yeah. stuff like that. So there is a fan base. and There's more fan base than there are comics being sold. This is true. So the, the, the demand is there or whatnot, you know, but the translation, 
the translation is so small. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah, yeah. I so. mean, I, I you know, I, I have a guilty pleasure when it comes to a lot of these uh, comic book TV shows. Uh, back when I was a kid, most of your comic book uh, TV shows uh, didn't deal with villains. Yeah. For some reason, Hollywood deemed villains silly. And I think the Batman 66 show probably did that. And so you had Superman going up against regular bank robbers. You had the Hulk going up against just regular people, you know, and to me that was never, I mean, I, I, I was glad I had them, yeah. but it was never appealing to me because that's not a true test of their power. There's really yeah. nothing, I, if I was a superhero, I'd be bored, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> and, and so that's why I, you know, one of, one of the shows that I still watch is The Flash. Um, and the reason why I started watching that show is because it was <laughs> the first show in a long time where they actually embraced the villains. And in the first season alone, they had so many villains you from like the, the comic gorilla, books. Don't you? I love Gorilla Grodd, right? And so, I mean, but you know, did it make the first appearance of Gorilla Grodd go up? No. Did it make the first appearance of Mirror Master go up or any of these others? No. I, I thought they did a great job with that character. They, they did. They did an amazing job. And um, but for some reason, <coughs> the way people are, uh, that doesn't equate into you know speculation or being hot as a bunch as these other group of movies over here do. And I, I don't. I've never understood it. What if we start covering that? I mean, what if we just randomly start covering that? What if we just randomly started a show covering these shows that don't get the attention? Okay. Uh -huh. Will that immediately affect those books? Probably not. Why not? Other people do it. I, I, it's true. Yeah. Other people don't cover that stuff. Right. They cover the other stuff. Yeah, they, they do. They cover Disney Plus shows. They cover Netflix shows. They cover whatever they want. And all of a sudden, the buzz is out there. Okay. What if we did one on the... the the CW shows or the, the networks that you don't really hear too much about. Mm -hmm. Would that make an effect on those books? What if we decided to bump the prices up? Screw it. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Yeah. That's the way I look at the thing. So, so, somewhere someone decided we're going to give this more attention. Yeah. And we're going to make this what we want it to be. And I don't know. I mean, like, like I said, there's no wrong answer to this. But the more and more I think about it. And I have trouble putting this in the words, to be totally honest. Because I'll, I'll sit there and I'll just think about it, think about it, and like, how do I, you know, translate that to paper or words and stuff? I really don't know. Yeah. But after a while, it just kind of gets to me and bugs me, and I'm like, okay, so what, you know? And I don't know. Yeah, I, I know. And I'll just be honest. There are times I, there are times that I do get caught up in it. Yeah. You know, especially when it's a favorite character of mine. And all of a sudden, something will start spiking, and I'll realize I don't have that thing. And I got to make myself not give in to that FOMO, yeah. right? Because all of a sudden, it's being invigorated, yeah. right? And, nice. and and it's appealing to me, right? And so, uh, it, but again, you know, I have to go off of fact yeah. and not let my emotions be, you know, the, the, the pusher of my judgment. There you go. Because when it comes to facts, I know inherently that most of these books, that when they go up, especially on speculation like this, they're going to come back down. Yeah. And rapidly. Yeah. Um, before we move on to the next question, I just want to say hello, everyone. Hey! We're probably about a half hour or so into the show, and I just want to say thank you for joining us. I hope you're enjoying the show and this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, do us a favor. If you want to give us a thumbs up, go ahead and do so. I know there's people in the chat right now that are probably asking people, oh, don't forget the thumbs up. So for them who's asking that, thank you. Thank you. But I guess we'll ask it as well. So let's see for if sure. we can't get to a, a thou or a hundred thumbs up before the premiere is done. So, right. And if you're watching this video on the Rewind, just so you guys know, and I've never really said this, but uh, if you watch it in the premiere, there's no ads in the show. Right. I actually do that on purpose. I take the ads out. Okay, so you just get a constant stream from the beginning to end with no ads except for the when it starts, you know, because there's always ads at the beginning of a video. Sure. And then there's probably an ad at the end. That's just how YouTube works. But during the premiere, there's no ads. Mm -hmm. And then later, I let YouTube do their thing or whatnot, sure. and, you know, and then they kind of muddy the water. But anyway, <laughs> uh, just want to say thank you for everyone joining us on the premiere, which is Monday morning at 5 a.m. Pacific st uh, Standard Time. We both get up for the most part, and we're kind of watching it, and Saying hello to everyone in the chat. So anyway. Hello. Hello, everyone. Christian, <laughs> hopefully the coffee's warm or good or whatever. So there yeah, you go. There you go. All right, Bob, you are up next with our good friend, God Tank. All right. Brother God Tank, he says, Brother Roadhouse. I think we do this to ourselves. I think every time any character shows up on a new show or pops up in a sitcom, we lose our minds and we start all the hype. I don't think I've heard of anybody mention Falcon and Winter Soldier until he came out in a show and everybody goes crazy. 
I try to stay away from that kind of stuff. Not interested. Um, I'm a big Falcon fan. He's actually one of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually think it's an undervalued character as far as the first appearance goes for, for that book. You know, which is an older book. It's rare. It's hard to find and good quality, you know, and stuff. And I think it's undervalued for how much that character has meant throughout the years besides the movie or TV factor, to be totally honest. Right, right. So any attention to that one, you know, I, I think, like I said, I think that book in general has been undervalued for a very long time. A long time, time yeah. Um, but he, he's talking about how we get so excited. And it's almost like a, it's like, it's like almost, <laughs> we're playing like hide and go seek almost. Mm -hmm. It's like, did you hear that? Everyone runs over there. Did you hear that? Everyone runs over there. And every week it's something new. Did you hear yeah. about that? And everyone runs over there. And that's all there is to talk about. Right. Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel. You mm -hmm. know, or, you know, Wonder Man, Wonder Man, Wonder Man. You know, and that's, that's it. And that's the talk of the week. And yeah. That, that's, that's all it is. And then you, everything else gets dropped. Yeah. And then that's all you hear. Okay. And then next week it'll be something, something different. And everyone just runs there right away. Okay, did you hear the news? Did you get that alert from Key Collector? Oh right. my God, they optioned something <laughs> that will probably never be made. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, but it's just like you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Mm -hmm. You know, to keep, to keep track. And actually, I look at Key Collector now. They actually have sections in Key Collector, Netflix section, Amazon Prime section. HBO Max, I mean, I was like, really? Now you do it by network sections. <laughs> right, right. It's interesting. I mean, more power to them, I mean, whatever it is, you know. Except they don't have a CW section. <laughs> do, 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 do they not? I don't know. I have, That's I don't a good use, question. I hardly, I hardly use Key Collector anymore except to look up, you know, like artists and stuff like that. Yeah, but I mean, that's the that's where we're at. That's, I mean, that's, as far as comic books go, that's kind of where it's at. It's like, literally, it's like you, you heard something. You're all, everyone's over there. You heard that? Everyone's over there. And you're just running around, and nobody is taking a second to say, should we be running around? And I think that's all I'm trying to ask. That's the only thing I'm trying to put out there. Is take a second and say, are we wasting our time doing this? Is it really making that big of a difference? Or are we causing the difference? Right. You know, and I think when you ask that question, me personally, I think we're the ones causing the difference. I don't, like I tried to explain with the numbers, I don't think we see that influx of outside people that we think that there is. I think that when something gets hot, I think there's definitely a, a large amount of people that will buy multiple copies. I'm talking like they will buy up eBay. You yeah. Know, and yeah. Oh, 30 copies on eBay? I'll buy every one of them. One guy or one group of people or whatnot. Because that's all they do. Yeah. You know, and, I, and that drives up demand because one guy holds... 40 copies or whatnot or 100 copies or something sure. like that. You know, and that's, and, you know, four other people want it. But 40 other people want it, they're already collectors. They've already been in the hobby and stuff like that. Because the growth of the hobby, as far as the outside coming in, driving from what we're valuing from these movies, I, I don't see it being there. You yeah. Know, I just, it just, the it's numbers from don't, with it from the, the, the numbers don't add up. Yeah. And I wish it, I wish it did. I wish it was the opposite. I wish I could be sitting here telling you guys, the opposite. I wish I could be saying there is a hundred percent increase in new people because of movies, because of TV, or a thousand percent increase. I don't want to sit here and say there is a point zero 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 one percent increase, right? Because of Black Panther was the number one movie in two thousand eighteen. That's just sad. Yeah. So okay. Uh, you got the next one. All right. right. Next one comes from our good buddy Brian Comet Crazy. Uh, hey. So he, his question is: He says, "My question to your question." is how come the TV version of Hulk and Spider-Man back in the day didn't generate the hype that TV shows and movies are doing to comic books today? I think the advent of the internet and uh, the instant info is the culprit for generating the buzz, not movies or TV per se. I agree. And I, that's why I wanted to put it on there. I, I kind of agree with that. What, for one, we asked the question, when did this start? When did... We, at what point was it decided that TVs and movies? It wasn't back when the Hulk was on TV, the TV show. It wasn't back when the, that Spider-Man show was going on. You know, that didn't make comics uh, go up in value. It might have turned people on to go buy comics, but I don't think it really made the comics go up in value. At that time, they were printing tons, and they were all over. They were in the convenience stores, and they were in the 7-Elevens. You can just go get them. You know, that turned people on to them. But I don't think the collector market 
like what we know of today. Yeah. Like increasing the value a thousand percent. Yeah, I, I, I think I can almost, and I'm not positive about this, but I think it can, because we were talking about this before the show, and I was talking about Batman 66 and how much buzz that created back in the 60s, but there really wasn't any comic shops. That's one of the things that you yeah. brought up. But I'm wondering if all this started right around Batman 89. Because I remember when that was coming out and that was advertised, everybody went nuts. Yeah. And even after the movie came out, there all of a sudden there were all these Batman fans. Sure. That I'm you never would have in a million years would you have seen that person say, Hey, I read comic books. But now everybody's going out and buying Frank Miller's The Dark Knight. And I, I think that it, at that particular point, that's kind of when it started. I don't know how much yeah. it lent to it, but I think that because of what happened around that movie, it's just been that way ever since. Yeah. Spider-Man comes out. I know that the uh, f- um, Amazing Fantasy 15 sold for a huge amount right around that first Spider-Man movie. Sure. And so I think there's, you know, since then, it, this has just been a conditioning because around that movie, all of a sudden, everybody became comic fans. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there was a gap in between when movies were coming out. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, we all know that. And now that now there's take away the last year because of the pandemic or whatnot. But normally there's like five to six superhero movies a year right now. Right, right. Um, so we get bombarded with them. Uh, but there was a big gap between the Batmans and the Spider-Mans, kind of what right. you said. So I don't know what they did during that time. I would just, I mean, I've only been collecting for a few years. So I, I mean, I've asked this before. What was it like 10 years ago? Right. Was it like this? Was there no. literally... Top ten list everywhere, or or something on there like every, every spec news. I mean, we had the internet ten years ago. Yeah, the, the we had only, apps on our phone. The only top ten list anybody ever got was Wizard Magazine. Okay, right. I mean that that's, that's I mean, and, and you had your little price guide in the back there and stuff like that. Um, but really, I, I think I think Brian's right. Yeah. Right. I don't think when the Hulk, you know, TV show came out or any of those shows from back then, I don't think it generated any buzz when it came to comic books. Yeah. Not in that way. Yeah. And, and not as far as like increasing the value of the market. Right. I think it did increase people wanting to get them. Right. But they were widely available. Right. They weren't not. Uh, people got to remember. Um, Action Comics number one. They printed over a million copies of that. Okay. That was a standard print order runs of books for a million copies of books. Right. Obviously, there's not a million copies available right now. No. It's very, you know, maybe a thousand of, of that. But I'm just saying, in years past, before they went directly through, uh, you know, comic shops, there's a million print runs is very common. Right. And so they're widely available, you know, all the time. All the time. They were, just, they were just there. They were in every convenience store. They were in every grocery store. So, I mean, just... It just is what it is. Right. And up until, you know, the 90s, when the 90s thing happened, and then all the print counts went way down and have, and have been like that for a long time. So, yeah. you know, I don't know. It's kind of weird when you think about that. When you think about, if, if I can look in the 80s and know that Amazing Spider-Man was selling a million copies a month, you know, in the 80s, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of copies of that book. You know, right now it sells maybe 60,000. Yeah. 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 I remember back 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 then. I just wanted the book. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I I didn't care about the, the you know the actual value of it. Uh, but you know, again, he's talking about the internet being the main culprit as far as what's generating sneaky the internet. The sneaky internet, and and I I think I think he's onto something there. Yeah. But you know, I think that the buzz that gets generated, uh, you know, seems like yeah. there's popularity has popped up, and maybe it's it's a, it's a false sense yeah. of what's actually happening. Yeah. All right, so I got the last comment here. This is from Robbie uh, Kirkpatrick. It says, I think it's a little bit of both because, yes, it should go up in price when they appear in a TV show or movie, but I also think we are conditioned to say that because it's the hottest thing to talk about in pop culture. Like, for example, something is killing the children, number one, with the recent news of the show or movie. Okay, so I think this is a pretty accurate statement because I think it probably is a little bit of both. Mm. I think there is... The simple fact that they, yeah, they decided to make a movie or something out of this character. They decided to put money behind it, you know, the, the TV studios or what. On, and I think that should probably be rewarded a little bit. Um, but like you said, you know, we, we kind of jump on the hottest thing. You know, we're conditioned to do it. You know, whatever whatever we hear, whatever it's posted, whatever jumps up on Instagram or on the news feed or whatnot, websites, top ten lists, you name it, we're instantly supposed to give it more weight than something else. Right. And that's where I don't really agree with that. You know, 
Um, I've always said I think a book should be worth value because of the content that's in the book, because of the storytelling, because of the, the character itself, not because of what they do outside the book. That's just me. That's my own personal thing. Not everyone will agree with me on that, and that's okay. You don't have to. But that's just how I feel, how I see it. Yeah. And when I see all these outside sources coming, knocking on the door, and, and um, making this, the book supposedly more valuable, and then you do see the increase of this book because of that outside influence, it's like, it drives me a little nuts to see that. I mean, it's just, uh, like I said, it just, to me, I think it is more the conditioning thing. We've kind of just accepted it now. It doesn't matter what it is because we're to the point now to where we don't need to know if the movie is any good. We don't need to know if the TV show is any good. As long as it's, if it's going to be on Disney+, Plus. And there's a picture that someone took in the crowd of a character. That's all I need. Yeah. That's all I need <laughs> to make this book go up a thousand percent. And that's all I need to put it on my top ten list. Yeah. Or well, that's all I need to, to push this on, on people out there, you know, with with multiple different platforms and stuff like that. Or to, to make this book more money. And it's like, okay, if that's the way we want this hobby to be... I guess it is what it is. Yeah, I, I, and I don't, I don't think you're going to change that for, for, for a while. I mean, you know, I mean, when I first came back into collecting, you know, I'm just I'll admit, I, I got caught up in that. I really did. Um, but, you know, now when I see those top 10 lists, I, you know, I don't I don't let them drive me to buy comics anymore. Yeah. I, I look at it. Oh, I got that one. Oh, that's cool. I got that one. Oh, yeah. It's up in price right now. That's cool for me. Yeah. You know, uh, but I don't let it drive my... Um, you know my decisions to buy anymore like like i did when i first came back into comics yeah. and i think that over time people do learn um and uh but that, that's what the show's about right yeah. i mean is is bringing some awareness to the hobby and the way we collect and this is one of those areas it's kind of a weird thing it is it is weird it's not it's not an easy conversation and like you know there's plenty of speculation or top 10 videos out there that talk about stuff to come you know yeah and pretty much that's all it is that, n- Nothing that really centers around, like, the day of the movie comes out. Right. You know, or the day the TV show comes out, and then it goes up. You know? Yeah. It's always beforehand. Yeah. You know, and it could be years beforehand, to be totally honest. And that's all it takes right now. And there's plenty of, uh, you know, the future MCU speculation or whatnot. Wait yeah. until Wolverine makes an appearance. And I thought, give me a break. They made nine, nine movies with Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, I, I, I get some people with, the uh, okay, when Wolverine... Wolverine hits the MCU, he's going to be even more popular. I'm like, he's already popular. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. Okay, the X-Men movies didn't do as well as the MCU movies. Uh-huh. But you're like comparing Hulk Hogan and The Rock. Exactly. There you okay? go. <laughs> it's like great. number one and number two, there's really not that big of a difference. Yeah. Or, or Hulk Hogan, The Rock, Randy Macho Man Savage, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. There you Is go. there a difference <laughs> between how popular those four guys are? They're all popular. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But if you want to rank them, sure you could do it. But there's a good chance that if you somebody heard of The Rock, they also heard of Hulk Hogan. This is true. You know, and that's the kind of when I look at you know the billions and billions of dollars or the millions and millions of people who have seen this, and to say one's more popular than the other, it's not like they're in the dark right. with the other stuff. <laughs> right. You know. So I mean, it's like okay, the one one Marvel movie is going to make a difference. Yeah. One MCU movie will make a difference compared to nine Fox. You know, Wolverine movies? I don't know. I just, I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. You know. I hear you, man. I hear you. But it's it's part of our hobby. People get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, that's our last comment on there. And that's what we want to talk about. I think about. it's a good topic, man. Yeah. You know? And this is, it was a question I asked on my, my Facebook a couple weeks ago. There's like a ton of comments on there. Mm-hmm. And I just decided to put it on here and see what people had to say. Like I said, there's no wrong answers. Yeah. And there's no wrong way to look at it and stuff. But there's nothing wrong in taking a minute and thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And that's all I'm asking. Just take a minute and think about it. You know, and whether it changes your mind or not, or maybe it solidifies your feeling even more so, well, power to you. Yeah. So, anyway. All right. Let's go on to our uh, next thing was our uh, Final Five. Final Five. All and right. Our final Five is brought to you by none other than Comic Pro Line for all your bags, boards, and uh, boxes and Plastic boards or whatever you want. Supply needs. All your comic supply needs. Contact Comic Pro Line. The, the information is down below, and our buddy Tony will hook you up. But, uh, Bob, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, so, keeping with the uh, theme of uh, comics 
that have been given to me or people sent to me. Oh, look at uh, you. Just bragging. Our, yeah. Our good buddy uh, Len from Lenovations uh, sent me his uh, self-published comic book. Oh, cool. Uh, this is Len Milohovich. I, I don't think I pronounce it, but you can go to lenovationspress.com. Yep. And uh, he's got this uh, book called Sector 12. And uh, he sent me uh, a few of these, which are really cool. I haven't had a chance to read them yet. They're good. Now, are they? Have you? I have. That's awesome. It's kind of like a, um, a spy thing going on there. Mm-hmm. And uh, then he has another one that he also sent me as well. Um, but since this is Final Five, I didn't bring that one as well. Sure. Um, but here we go. This is Section 12, a flashback number one. Pretty cool. I love the artwork on this stuff. And uh, flashback number, uh, flashback 12, uh, section 12, flashback number two. Nice. And then before I, I head off on this, uh, Len does his own artwork. Yeah. And he sent me some stuff that he did uh, because he knows I love Daredevil. And uh, so here's, here's a Daredevil piece that he did. Pretty awesome. You can check that out, buddy. Yeah. And here's one where he's got Daredevil going up against the boy Wonder Robin, which I thought was amazing. And he sent these to me because he knows how much I love Daredevil. Oh, you like Daredevil? I do. Mm. And then check this one out. He sent this one to me because it's bullseye, oh baby. Gosh. Look at that. So, Len, thank you very much. Appreciate you, man. And he does some great artwork. And uh, I thought I'd show stuff that people had uh, sent to me. And, Len... Thank you. Well, guess what? What's that? I'm going to keep with that theme. Okay. Because I got stuff that people sent me as well. Sweet. <laughs> um, anyway, these were sent to me by a viewer that wants to remain anonymous, so thank you to them, and you know who you are. You're probably watching right now. Uh, but these are really cool. This is uh, Violator versus uh, Braddock, Braddock, number Bad one. Bad Rock. Mm-hmm. There you go. Look how cool that cover is. Yeah, I remember when that came out. Wildcats, number one. Wild Look at this goodness. Wildcats, number one. Love 90s it. goodness. Love it. You can never have enough of those. No. <laughs> uh, here's a great looking spawn, number 71. Nice. Did not have that one. Sweet. Like that one a lot. Here is Venom number one, uh, the third printing variant. It's nice. Cool. I like that one quite a bit. And here is Dynamite. I don't even know what this is. S or whatnot. Mm-hmm. But this is an Alex Ross cover. And it's autographed by Alex Ross. Sweet. So this is my second Alex Ross autograph. So. Nice. There you go. Very cool. Thank you very much to the anonymous donor of those books. But I actually have something extra as well, since you showed extra stuff. Yeah. I'm going to do it, too. So I got some of these magnets that were sent to me, and uh, they're all comic book covers. Mm -hmm. So let's see if you can see them really quick. Here is Something is Killing the Children. Nice. It's a little magnet. Um, He sent me some of my favorite covers. So Amazing Spider-Man number 129. Not bad. Uh, Incredible Hulk, number 181. Nice. Nice. And Invincible Iron Man, number one as well. Very cool. Very cool. And these are from, um, let me see here. I got it written down. Uh, Where was it? Oh, there. Old School Comics sent these. Very cool. And he actually sells stuff on eBay. You can go to his website or the eBay page, Old School Mm -hmm. Comics. And his name is Alex Finney, and he does stuff on Facebook as well. So he wanted me to let people know that he sells books. I think he probably sells these as well. Yeah, so. the one that's not there is he also sent uh, a Daredevil 131, first yeah. appearance of Bullseye. I've got that at my house. Yeah, you, you only get one. I know. It's all right. I get four. <laughs> 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 so anyway, very uh, thank you very much. These are awesome. I like these. These are going to go on my refrigerator. Absolutely. So, very, I know at the, the store they sell them for like 10 bucks. Do they? Yeah, that one store. I don't like that guy. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there you go. That's our uh, final five brought to you by Comic Pro Line. Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and switch up, and we're going to go to Robbie's Pick of the Week. Hey, everybody. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups from Pop Culture Philosophers, home of the Alabama Chalupa, a.k.a. the Alabama Pancake, and you are watching Coffee and Comics on Comics with Bueller, one of the best channels out there, and my Pick of the Week is... Beckstar number one by Mad Cave Studios, and uh, this was a great first pick. And uh, did you get a chance to read this one? No. Oh, uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, it basically is uh, deals with a uh, like space mercenary, kind of like a Han Solo type character, except she's female. Nice. She's got a luck dagger that she has that uh, she uses, and uh, she gets pulled into uh, like an intergalactic situation. And uh, it, it was just a great first read. Really did you fun. Say luck dagger. Luck dagger. Yeah, it's it's kind of like it, it bestows luck upon her, kind of like Domino sure. has. Sure. Yeah. 
Sounds awesome. It was. It was. It was really good. And that was Robbie's pick of the week. It was. I think he's got that dude on his show or something like that. Does he? The writer or something? Oh, like that's that? right. He does, doesn't he, he? He's like a friend of the show. He says that all the time. <laughs> I didn't read it. My comic shop didn't have it. And so uh, I was going to pick it up because of Robbie's suggestion. Yeah. But uh, maybe they get it, but they don't carry a lot of Mad Cave stuff. They at, don't. Uh, they don't. At my LCS. So. But it's a really fun read. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to have to take your word for it. And I'll take Robbie's word for it because what else am I going to do? Yeah. And uh, anyway, pick of the week. Pick of the week. From Robbie. Go check out his channel, Pop Culture Philosophers. I think he just hit 1,000 subscribers. 1,000? 1,000. 1,000. So congratulations, <laughs> Robbie. Well deserved. Well deserved. <laughs> With your fake chalupas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fake chalupas. <laughs> anyway, check out his channel. Link is down below. It's also a featured channel on our homepage as well. Um, let's go ahead and go to our... Fan favorite segment are Was It Good? Yes. Brought to you by uh, Scout Comics. You go to scoutcomics.com, enter the code Bueller, you save 10%. You can get their monthly subscription box, which is pretty cool. You get all their titles because a lot of comic shops don't carry their titles, which I'm finding out. Mm -hmm. Still have not gotten my copy of Recount, but maybe someday, right? <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, this is where we talk about the books we read and we let you know if they're any good. Mm -hmm. So, Bob, let me just show you this right here. Bob, here is Batman number 108. Mm -hmm. And Bob, was it good? It was phenomenal. Absolutely. I, I really, really loved it. I mean, uh, on my Instagram page, I posted the very first splash page that you get right when you first open the comic book. And as soon as I saw this page, I was like, this is going to be a good week in comics. Jorge Jimenez, the artwork that he lays down inside of this book and the coloring by uh, uh, Tor Toru More, I, th I think that's it. Right? That's close enough. Phenomenal, yeah. and uh, anyway, it's a great, a great read, and I just love what, what uh, James Tiny has been doing with this whole run of Batman, and um, I loved it. And you got another new character, I guess. Yeah, there was another new character. I, I didn't really, you know, <coughs> it, it was an okay character, you know. I mean, just on par with, like, you know, like Punchline, I guess. But, sure. but you know, uh, I love Tiny and Drone. It's, it's been been amazing. There you go. So it was good. It was good. <laughs> All right. All right. The next one you got here is Walesville. By the Bad Idea Comics. Mm -hmm. And Bob, was it good? It was good. Yeah, uh, you know, every single one of these comics that Bad, uh, Bad Idea has come out with, they've been really high quality. There's actually two stories inside of this book. and It's uh, a thicker book. It's like the... Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, one deals with, uh, there's a whole kind of society of people that's been in the belly of a whale, and this kid shows up, he gets swallowed. And uh, then there's kind of like a commentary on on society through it, which is which is really cool. And then there's another story uh, about um, rocks and uh, how at one particular point, you know, they used to be jagged. They went through this whole polishing process and they kind of shunned the rest of the world out. And it's a commentary on uh, racism that was really really okay. well done. I enjoyed it immensely. I, I thought the artwork was really cool. Is this a one shot? I, this one I think I is a one shot. One shot yeah. yeah. Uh, this, is, I, this is my first time I got the bad idea button, right? Which I, I don't I don't know what that gives you, but <laughs> I, was, I got it. <laughs> I bet you did. There you go. So, but yeah, it was good. Awesome, man. I'm happy for you. Why, thank you. I actually did get a chance to read the Trenchers one, the other bad idea one. Uh -huh. I, that was pretty good. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to read this one, so. Cool. I just haven't read it yet. Okay, the next one we actually don't have a physical copy, so we'll just put out an image right here. But we're going to go with the good Asian mm -hmm. and bomb. Was it good? It was good. I, you know, I was really what? <laughs> oh, three great books. That's three awesome. great books. Uh, <laughs> it, it was. Uh, I was really surprised because it, it gave a lot of uh, uh, you know some history that I didn't know about. Uh, but it's based on a character that um, was a real life detective in Hawaii, uh, and then uh, kind of like, like a Charlie Chan vibe. Uh, <coughs> takes place in San Francisco. Has this whole crime noir. Uh, feel to it and I really enjoyed yeah. it it was a good first read yeah I read it too I thought it was pretty good I liked the whole noir vibe and yeah. stuff so I'll probably add it to my full list yeah it, awesome I, man I would suggest it well there you go those are three books from Bob that he read and they were all good all good alright I guess I'm up you're up yeah alright so the first one up on your list was uh, this Eve yes number one and this one's by Boom Studios right you got it alright and so there it is and so Bueller yes Bob was it good? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, um, it was interesting. You know, it was kind of like a, there's a little Matrix element to it. Did you read it? I haven't read it yet. I have okay. it, but I haven't read it yet. Um, 
So it's like this little girl, and she's like in a like a simulation or whatnot, and she comes out of like hibernation, and there's a little robot bear waiting for her, and said, "Sorry, your whole life is a dream." And he, she's like, "What? That sucks." <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like living like uh, like the the world is like flooded or something like that. So you only see like the tops of buildings and stuff, and everything's covered in water. And like I think her father is dead or something. So it's just her and the little bear robot. And that's just like that's that's it. That's so, their existence. Yeah, right now, I mean, she literally just got introduced to, you know, the real world, you know, from her, you know, weird thing, whatever it was, you know, her Matrix stuff. So interesting. Yeah, that's what we got going on in that book. I thought it was pretty good. It was it was fine. So, cool. Yeah. I, I I'm I'm interested in reading it. Yeah. A little bear in it. So. A little bear. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, first good book. Yep. All right. The next one comes from AWA Upshot. And this is Marjorie Finnegan, Temporal Criminal. And Bueller. Yeah. Was it good? Um, I, I, yeah. I think so. It was interesting. It's like, it's about time travel. Mm-hmm. And it's literally like the, the character on the front. She's like, uh, she goes through time and steals stuff, you know, with like modern weapons and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. there's like another guy. He's like, uh, he goes back in time to like the pilgrims and stuff, and he gives them like machine guns to fight off the Vikings and stuff like that. <laughs> so it's like really weird. So they're like they're like just time jumping, uh-huh. and they're like you know giving weapons out to people all across time and stuff. And there's like a, she has a sister, and the sister, I kind of she's like the policeman for this whole you know agency or whatnot. You know, uh-huh. saying all oh, this is against you can't do that. It's against the code or something like that. And she kind of goes after some people who are illegally doing this and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was, uh, uh, the artwork was pretty good. And uh, I'm liking this AWA book. I'm not liking it. Actually, pretty much all their books right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it was worth it. I was looking forward to it. It's the first one. It's only, it's eight parts. Normally, their books are four or five books for the series. This one is eight, eight oh, uh, issues. So, I'm on it. I like Very it. cool. Well, you got two books that were kind of on the fence good, yep. right? You're not too confident there saying, yes, it's good, but yeah, they were okay. Yeah. All right. So what's your third book? What's my third one? Yeah. My third one is Heroes Reborn. Heroes Reborn. And number I don't one, have a copy of it. So. By Marvel Comics. Yes. And uh, Bueller. Yes, Bob? This is the question. I know it is. Was it good? Surprisingly, it was good. That's what I heard. I was surprised how much I enjoyed the book. I still didn't buy it because I didn't because like, I'm sticking to my guns. I stole the paper quality thing, mm-hmm. uh, so I'm not buying it. But uh, actually, the paper quality was a little bit better. But it was like six bucks, so I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> Doesn't excuse it. So, but uh, surprisingly, I liked it. I liked the, the simple fact of the the different introduction to some of the newer characters and some of the older characters that we're not as familiar with are presented in the front and the spotlight. You know, because the existing characters that we were familiar with like Iron Man and you know Spider-Man they don't exist and stuff but the people do mm-hmm. Peter Parker exists Tony Stark exists but not their superhero counterpart interesting um, so I actually really enjoyed it you know I thought it was pretty good it was drawn really well um, and then the, the Blade is like out of time so he's the, he Blade is the only one who knows like how come these people aren't the superheroes so it's like you know Elseworlds or whatever you want to call it and mm-hmm. stuff so he's trying to figure out, you know, what's going on in, in this time frame or wherever they're at in a different world. and uh, But he's trying to find other people who, who kind of recognize it. And at the end of the book, he does come across someone who possibly would be in the know what's going on. I don't want to spoil it for you because it's a nice little review. Mm-hmm. But uh, I thought it was good. I was surprised how much I enjoyed it. I'll definitely read number two. I'll stay away from the spinoffs because they're all obviously doing a bunch of those. Yeah, But... I was pleasantly surprised how much I enjoyed Who Was Reborn because I had zero expectations for it. Yeah, yeah. So. Same with me, which is why I didn't get it. But interesting. Yeah, yeah, Robbie said he liked it too, so yeah. I'll probably uh, end up checking it out. There you go. So what are you going to read next week, Bob? Uh, so next week I all number two issues. Uh, I have Silver Coin number two by Image Comics. Looking forward to that. Nice. Uh, and then Geiger number two comes out also by Image. I like that book. I do. I like that one a lot. And then, of course, I'm going to read Canto and the City of Giants number two. How could I not? It's going to get delayed. It's going to get delayed. (laughs) I'm calling it right now. Uh, I'm going to be reading, uh, let's see, what do I got? I got Joker number three. Oh, sweet. Um, I've been enjoying that. Uh, Proctor Valley Road number three. Nice. I like that one as well. That's by Boom Studios. And I'm going to read Ice Cream Man number 24. Nice. Hopefully there's words in it. 
You know, yeah. Sometimes there's no words in those books. Uh, Lost in Comics just did a um, uh, an interview with the artist Martin Morazzo on there. Yeah, that was pretty it. cool. Very nice. But yeah, I'm looking forward to. It seems like it's been a while since Ice Cream Man has come out. Yeah, it's been a while. And they normally they do that for some reason. Yeah, they take a few months off. So we're getting 24. There's a bunch of exclusive covers for this one. It's crazy. They look nuts. They do. Yeah, because I saw them all. I was like, they're kind of disturbing to be honest. Yeah, with you. I like the one that's uh, the the mask homage. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Anyway, that's what I'm going to be reading, and that's our was it good segment. Was it good? So for the most part, I think we all like the books that we got this week. So that was awesome. Yeah, we read other stuff as well, but we're not going to tell you. <laughs> let's move on to our next segment our next segment is random thoughts with bob and bueller come on bob's the headliner this this is brought to you by no one because nobody wants to sponsor this crap all right <laughs> the one that i'm headlining <laughs> sorry bob hey, maybe it's up to you to get the sponsor on this one way to step up there bob there you go um, anyway, we're, uh, what are we talking about for random thoughts? You actually came up with this one. Yeah, uh, Jupiter's uh, Legacy. Okay. Uh, came out on um, on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Uh, they dropped the what the whole first season. Uh, I I watched the first three episodes. I think you did too. Yes, right? so the first two or three. I can't remember for sure. And I so I watched. thought that would be a good subject. Yeah. So let me ask you about. It. Are you familiar with? It at all? I am not. I this is. I mean, I love Mark Millar's work. I know I say Millar, it's Miller, but uh, I love Mark Millar's work. Um, and uh, but this is one of his properties that I'm not familiar with. I know it came yeah. out in like a, a graphic novel. I think is what it, it first came out at. Yeah. As never read it, and uh, so I didn't know what to expect. I'll, I'll tell you the trailer. Uh, didn't wow me. Sure. And but I knew because it's a superhero property. Of course, I'm going to check it out because it's done by him. Of course, I'm going to check it out. Um. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised at those first three episodes. I really enjoyed them. Yeah. Um, I was too. I don't know. I'm in the same boat. I've never read a Jupiter Legacy, whatever it is, before. Mm-hmm. I wasn't familiar with any of the characters. I saw a trailer for this a while back, and I was like, oh, what's that? It sounds interesting. Mm-hmm. And then it, uh, I didn't know for sure what was coming out, so it kind of snuck up on me. Yeah. And uh, I watched the first uh, two or three episodes, and I like the fact that they, if you haven't watched them, we'll probably a little bit of spoilers just so you guys know. But they do a good job of jumping between past and present, which yeah. is great because the past is showing the origin stories of the main character heroes, and the present is what they're at now, and they're dealing dealing with their sibling or their their kids or whatnot who are coming into becoming superheroes themselves right, right now. Right. So I think it's really good how they're doing it because I don't know about these guys' past. And so they're filling in the gaps for me. Yeah, which I, I think is a great way to do it because we're getting the origin story. Yes. As you're getting this whole other thing in the present going on as well. Uh, and it, the feel, I, I, I was telling my wife about this last night, the kind of feel that, to me anyway, it kind of feels like the boys meets Invincible. Yeah. That's kind of the how it's kind of how it feels because there's a whole thing with his dad, you know, with the you know the father and daughter and son relationships. And, uh, you know, from a superhero standpoint... Uh, and then, but it's also, uh, I mean, it doesn't hold back anything like the boys, I mean, yeah. the boys goes full on, but, yeah. uh, but, uh, you know, kind of like a justice league type, sure. you know, trope on it. And, uh, I, I, I was, re- I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I thought the pacing of the show was really good. I thought the characters were engaging. I liked the, was Josh Dromel, is that the guy's name? I think that's his name. He's the main lead character. I've always liked him as an actor and stuff. Utopia, right? Yeah, he was in uh, Las Vegas and stuff. That's right, that's right. I like that show. So I think he does a good job. Um, uh-huh. But I thought it was great. I thought the, the it looked nice. The graphics and stuff or the CG or whatever was pretty good. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking forward to learning more of the backstory. I like the simple fact that the, like the newer generation of superheroes, which is his kids, are dealing with the fact that like his morals were we don't kill, we don't cross that line, you know, and then like he's like his kids like well sometimes you have to right you know and I like that because it's all it's almost like the Batman versus uh, Nightwing right in, in a certain way yeah know? absolutely and so it's a pretty but instead of just like regular people they got superpowers and they can you know yeah well if the villains stop following that rule why why do yeah. we have to keep at it that was that was a great dichotomy yeah so i, I think it was pretty good and that the first episode had a great uh, battle scene at the end yeah that battle scene was amazing yeah and that's actually what i heard about it's like oh the battle scene is really good so i was looking forward to, to watching it so i'm probably going to finish watching it this week mm-hmm. and uh, maybe we'll hit it next week and we'll kind of give our final thoughts absolutely on the whole series so Sounds good to me. Not a bad idea. Anyway, I don't have any other random thoughts. 
That was it. Do you have yeah. anything else? Yeah, we got an exclusive, man. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about that some more. <laughs> I I can't stop thinking about it, man. There you go. Well, here, you can hold some. I'll put some in your hand there. Thank you. So we're going to hit on the exclusive a little bit more before we go, obviously. We want to get these out. We want to sell out today. Yeah. I want to send all 70 some odd sets. I think there's 79 or 8. There's a little less than 80 available right now. And we'd like to sell out today. That's our goal is get them all sold out today and send them out so you guys all have them by the end of the week. And uh, I know I just did a variant last month, and I wasn't going to do one back-to-back, but this was an opportunity for Bob to get in on it. And the Second Sight Publishing really stepped up yeah. and made this available. So and we thank really, you to Second Sight Publishing. Yeah, we Absolutely. really couldn't pass this, pass this up, and I was really excited for Bob to have this opportunity. Thank you. And so uh, the combination of everything kind of worked out really well. So if you want these books... Um, like I said, you get the whole set, and you get the Virgin, which that's the one that Bob really wanted. Yep. And then you get the trade dress. I actually, I told Bob, I said, man, the Virgin one is actually pretty cool. It is cool. It really is. And I is. was a little surprised because I'm more of a trade dress one myself. And uh, But you can get both books. Uh, we're selling them as a set. It's $24 for $6. <laughs> <laughs> He's giddy, man. He's giddy. I can't get over he this, He loves man. just looking at the logo. I do. He's going to put, these are the only comics in this collection that are going to be reversed in the bag. <laughs> the cover is going to be facing the uh, the board. But I mean, that's 90s team it action is. goodness right there, which it I is. love. But man, look at that. So if you want to go, if you bought the Blowtorch and you want this to go with it, because they go together. That's uh-huh. a blowtorch on the cover. He's part of this team. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're $24 for the set, $6 shipping. Uh, limit two sets uh, per person. We don't want to, you know, everyone to just buy them all. So limit it to, if you buy two sets, it's $8 shipping, just $2 more. Right. Um, all you got to do is just send us an email. Our email is Bob and Bueller comic at gmail.com. And this, is a, this email is just used for this book. And so just send us an email saying, hey, I'm interested. Let us know if you'd like us to sign the book as well. Um, I'd appreciate that right off the bat. That way we don't miss any because uh, it's kind of hard to go back over, you know, so many emails and find the ones that have that on there. Right. So let us know if you want us to sign them. There's no People ask if that's extra cost. No, I wouldn't charge anything for that. It's not worth it. Trust me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you want us to sign it, like I said, by default, we're going to sign the back. But if you say sign the front we will but yeah, uh, absolutely. anyway uh, so they're available right now so send us an email and say I want one and, and do me a favor when you do congratulate Bob uh, <laughs> let <laughs> him know congratulations thank you <laughs> this has been a while coming and I'm really like I said I'm really excited to be working with Bob on this and stuff you know because it's for he's a great friend of mine and uh, we've talked about this in the past mm-hmm. and finally we got the opportunity to do it together and we took advantage of it and uh here we go. And now Bob's all happy. I am. I'm it's very happy. It's worth it if we didn't sell another copy to see how happy he is right now. <laughs> to be told that if nobody bought one, if nobody just to bought see one. Him, how happy he was when he came in the door today, it was worth every penny. I couldn't wait, man. Yeah. You have no idea when, you know, because I, I came to your house last night, you know, to, to basically grab him. And, uh, but I wasn't going to look at him until, you know, we were here together. You have no idea. How hard it was not to open that box last night. <laughs> I, left, I left the box opener on the counter for you to open it. I know, I know. I just didn't didn't feel right. Yeah, and honestly, uh, another shout out to Second Sight Publishing. Tr- tremendous packaging. Um, yeah. The box within a box, and they were individually wrapped in packs of 10. Awesome. Not one of them was damaged, and it was just fantastic. So kudos to... To those guys, the quality of the book is awesome. It's the, amazing. The, the nice, glossy, shiny uh, pages. The cover is a thicker cardstock. Sorry, Marvel. <laughs> we can afford to do it. Yeah. You can afford to you do it. You can afford to do it. Okay? Absolutely. <laughs> Think of it that way. If we can afford to do it, we're just some <laughs> two bozos sitting here on a free YouTube channel. <laughs> Come on. They you gotta be it. kidding me. What are you gonna do? Yeah, what are you gonna do? Exactly. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so they're available right now. You want to say anything more, Bob, about them? No, I'm I'm just floored, absolutely floored. Uh, thank you so much for allowing allowing me to be, uh, you know, p- to partner with you on this. Uh, this is like I said, this is something I never in my life thought would ever happen. Yeah. And uh, for it, you know, to be right there. Look at that. I'm just I'm 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 amazed. You know this. Hey, put, that, put that up here. He wants to show off that. You're darn right. Look at that. Uh, because 
there's there's a piece of this that I can say that I was a part of comic history and there, there's, there a, there's a part of it right there. That's awesome. And that just blows me away. Thank you so much. Yeah, I told them actually to put them like in a row like this because mm-hmm. if they were side by side, they just look like balls. <laughs> you told me that. And I was like, <laughs> if we put them, this, 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 oh, there's the balls. There's the balls. <laughs> so they're gonna go up and down, not not left to right. This is the way my friend thinks. I just want to make sure you guys I know. I don't want any phallic things going on in my books. <laughs> this just means, well, never mind. I'm not yeah, going to exactly, say exactly. <laughs> uh, So anyway, just send us an email. Let's get these sold out. And then, uh, you know what, there's, uh, I said this in the past. This is just the early, early relationship I have with Second Sight Publishing. We're going to be working with them more so in the future uh, with other exclusives. Uh, I'm friends with the uh, the creators there and stuff like that. They really appreciate uh, us kind of getting the word out for their books, and it's well deserved. So, um, if you choose not to get this book, do me a favor: go to your comic shop and tell them to order Chess or order Blowtorch or order The Edge. Um, these are all books from Second Sight Publishing that they can order and have in their stores, and you can check them out. And maybe you'll like them and stuff like that because they're worth it. It's a new publisher; they've only been around a little over a year. And they just now got uh, put in the diamond. So every comic shop in America or the world can now order these books. Uh, but I'm the only one, and Bob is the only one now, with an exclusive for Chess, number Love one. It. So congratulations, Bob. Congratulations to you too, Bueller. Oh, thank you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. All right, I think that's about it. Anything you got anything going on? You're, you need to do a video this week showing off your book. I, I do, and and I you know I haven't uh, put out any content. Of course, you know the week before I was I was down in the dumps, uh, and then uh, this week I've been kind of uh, spending some time with family. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I do have my new show that's going to be coming out not this week but the following week. That's Bullseye Bob's Five and Fifteen. Yeah, and uh, that's where I'm going to go over five topics in five uh, in 15 minutes or less sure and uh, my first show is going to revolve around the five what i consider the five best daredevil runs nice and so that's what i'm gonna start with and uh so be be uh, stay tuned for that uh and i'm uh, i'm if i can get to reading my comics i will put a review video out this week but for sure this next week when new comic book day comes out i will have a new video that'll be dropping right. and i'll announce the show and all that you gotta do another you gotta do at least one video showing your new book. Oh, I will. I mean, just do I like an announcement. Go buy this book. You, got, you have maybe, to. Maybe so, while supplies last. <laughs> so you got to at least do like a three or four minute showing off your book. You got it. You got it. There you go. But don't put it out before Monday morning. <laughs> no, no, no. I will. I will. So like Tuesday night or Monday night. Yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. That. <laughs> anyway. All right, That's man. That's good, man. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you so much to everyone who's watching. Thank you so much to everyone who made this possible for us to yes. be able to do this. Because really... If you guys weren't watching, we couldn't do this. No. We couldn't, be, you know, put out the money to make these books happen because we'd just be sitting on them, you know. Yeah. But it's because of you guys because we know that there's an audience out there that enjoys this type of stuff and likes supporting the show and likes supporting these artists and these creators. And now we have the opportunity to kind of, you know, do that type of thing. So Absolutely. thank you to you guys. Thank you. Very much appreciated and much more to come. Um, all right, Bob, that's all I can think of. I don't think there's anything else. Um, I don't know what next week's topic is, but I do want to hit on mystery boxes again sometime soon. Sure. It's been over a year since we hit that topic. Really? It's yes. been that long? It's been that long. It's and due. I think that the, what we called the last one was our mystery box is a scam. Right. That's right. And that was the name of the episode. Mm-hmm. So we need to revisit that. I don't know if it's next week or the week after, but very soon. So. Sounds good to me. All right, Bob. Take us out. All right. So don't forget to like and subscribe. You know what to do. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> awesome. We got an exclusive. I know. <laughs> <laughs>